Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me today to talk about guided imagery as a comfort practice to support healing. I'm Linnea Lindquist, Director of Spiritual Care at Mary and Joy Rehabilitation Hospital, and I'm filming here at the Living Well Cancer Resource Center. Living Well, as most of you probably know, is part of Northwestern Medicine and offers 100 plus free programs and services to cancer patients and their families. If you have any questions at all during my talk, I'd love to engage with your questions toward the end of the presentation. All you need to do is post them in the comment section and I'll answer them a little bit later. So you may or may not be familiar with the practice of guided imagery to support comfort, relaxation, and healing, but it's a practice that's been with us as humans for many, many years. The use of guided imagery can be traced back to very ancient spiritual practices where people have used a mental picture of a place that for them is associated with peace and relaxation and well-being um, to support their health, their recovery, their um, ability to sleep well, manage pain, and many other things. So we can do a long historical trajectory, but we're not going to go into great detail. Um, but if you think to your own spiritual or religious tradition, you might be able to identify an image that comes to mind um, that you're familiar with. For example, um, my own tradition includes writings from a book of the Psalms. And in one of the very first Psalms, there's an image of a person who's spiritually flourishing compared to a tree planted by a beautiful river whose roots go really deep and whose leaves and fruits growing from the tree are healthy and lush and vibrant. We might not identify that as guided imagery, but the psalm invites us to connect with that image and imagine ourselves in that beautiful place, flourishing like that gorgeous tree next to the river. Very, very simple, um, but images like that abound in spiritual and religious traditions, as well as just in wellness practices, um, more generally to support good mental, emotional, and spiritual health. So. Guided imagery for me um, became very personal about 26 years ago. And the reason I remember that is because I was pregnant with my daughter at the time. And I went to a professional con um, conference and there was some music at the conference. And one of the songs um, included an image. And the image at that time, for whatever reason in that moment, just really impacted me. Um, that image was so beautiful and so compelling and I felt so drawn to it that I started to use that image in my own personal practice, my own spiritual prayers. Um, when I would close my eyes, I would think about the image and I didn't even really know at that time in my life that like there was a name for what I was doing. <laughs> it was just intuitive. It just, I knew that it was, um, it was beneficial for me. Years later, when I started to become more familiar with meditation and educated, um, I actually realized that what I had been doing, even though I had never been formally taught about it, was guided imagery. When I was certified officially in mindfulness-based stress reduction as a, um, as a certificate that I, I earned to be able to practice that, um, I became much more aware of the benefits of guided imagery, not only for myself, but more broadly. So lots and lots of research has been done on meditation more broadly, mindfulness for, for certain, um, but benefits uh, of course have included the benefit of, of just being able to, to relax to give your brain a break from sometimes those racing or recurring thoughts, um, to settle down the spirit, um, to promote wellness and, and healing. One of the things in particular that we use um, guided imagery for a lot at Mary and Joy is to support people 
to enhance that sense of comfort and relaxation who are experiencing pain. So it's part of the curriculum that we use um, when we educate on non-pharmacological pain relief practices. So mindfulness and meditation, there's literally hundreds of different ways in which to practice mindfulness and meditation. Um, I'm gonna give you, point you towards some resources at the end to help you get started. Um, Again, we're going to focus on guided imagery today. Broadly speaking, using meditation and mindfulness is considered to be very safe. Um, the one thing I will say at the onset about guided imagery in particular is that professionals urge uh, caution in using guided imagery if a patient or person has a history of any type of psychosis. So if that's true for you or someone that you know we might try to guide you toward a different practice um, in mindfulness and meditation. Having said that, um, I'm going to help you to just learn a really easy guided imagery practice um, that involves um, identification of a personal place for you that's associated with peace and relaxation. I'm gonna describe the practice, and then I'm gonna actually invite you to try it out. So we're gonna do a really little short mini version of it so you can try it if you'd like. In the natural world, out in nature, think about a place either that you've been, maybe it's a place from your childhood, maybe it's a vacation destination that you had, Maybe it's a place you've never been, but you've always wanted to go. Or maybe it's a place you invent in your mind. Just, you just create it. Something that to you is just really beautiful. We encourage you to have it connect with nature in some way. Nature is an underutilized often resource to support us, especially in the midst of tough times. So identify a place that for you is beautiful. One simple form of guided imagery is to then just close your eyes and start to imagine yourself there. So we're not gonna do it now, but this is what I'll guide you in in just a minute. Then as, as we imagine ourselves in that place, it's beautiful to us. What we're gonna do is engage all of our senses. So we're gonna think about what it looks like. What does it look like in this beautiful place that I, that I really love? What does it sound like? What do I hear if I'm in a place like that? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? So we're just gonna identify four or five things using our senses that we would experience if we were actually in that place. So we're engaging our imagination, right? Which is an, another one of those underutilized tools that's free, that we can use anytime that can really support our spiritual, emotional, mental health. So once we've imagined ourselves in that place, then we can just linger there. We can linger there for a couple minutes. We can linger there for a longer stretch. Sometimes when people do guided imagery, they might even find that they drift off to sleep, imagining themselves in that beautiful place, wherever it was. For our purposes, I'm going to invite you to linger and enjoy the place that you identify. And then I'm going to slowly invite you to, um, to come back out from that place and um, re-engage in a question answer time. So if we were together in person, I would um, ask you if you had any questions right now, but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, and just, just practice. Give this a little time to um, kind of see how it feels as you try it out for yourself. So just get comfortable in your chair, whatever that looks like for you. Um, find a nice way that your body's not straining and that you can feel a moment of ease. You can keep your eyes open and just kind of um, find a spot where you can um, turn your gaze or you can close your eyes, whatever's most comfortable for you. 
and start to imagine yourself approaching that place, a place for you that's really beautiful and peaceful. And if you're in that place, you just feel like, hey, you know what? I can let go of my worries and cares for a few minutes and just enjoy being in this place, in this space. Imagine you're in that space and you find a really comfy spot to sit or to lay or to stand, whatever's most comfortable. Just a place that's inviting to you. Take a nice deep breath and just start to notice, right? Notice, what does it look like? What does it look like in that space? What do you see? Do you see any colors? How about some shapes? Notice things in your view that are moving. Notice things in your line of sight that are still, that aren't moving. Now take a minute to listen. What do you hear? Are there any rhythmic sounds that you hear that are repetitive? Maybe there's some loud kind of dominant sounds. What are those? Maybe there's some sounds that are quieter that would be easy to overlook if you weren't paying attention. How about the smells? What does it smell like? As you imagine the wind carrying smells, maybe you catch a little waft of something. Stretch out your hands and notice what you feel. What kind of textures are right within your arm's reach? Do you feel anything that's warm to the touch? Maybe something that's cool to the touch? Maybe something soft? How does it feel as the wind passes over your skin? What's the temperature of the air? Imagine someone approaching you, someone who really cares about you. And you know that they really care about you. And they ask you, I'd love to bring you a meal, something to eat, anything at all, whatever your heart desires. What would you pick? Imagine that person who really, really cares about you, setting up a little table right in front of you and bringing you everything you asked for, plus more. Everything you love. Imagine how it tastes. Take a bite of every little thing. A taste of whatever beverage is your favorite. Notice the taste of all the foods and all the drinks in your mouth. Give yourself permission to take a moment and savor the goodness and beauty of this place. This beautiful, nourishing, peaceful place. Soak in all the goodness.
breathe in deeply. Feel your body relax. Know that in this place, in this moment, you're safe. Breathe in the air deeply. Take some nice deep breaths. Those kind of breaths when you breathe in where your belly goes out. Expanding like a little balloon. And say thank you to all the beauty that nourishes you to the beautiful place that welcomed you. And slowly, gently, with kindness toward yourself, tenderly, begin to open your eyes. Gently bring your gaze back to the Facebook Live post. and open your spirit to re-engage with our conversation. So I would love to know how it felt for you. And uh, sadly, I can't kind of have a conversation, um, but if you'd like to post something, you most certainly can. The reason I chose that particular version of guided imagery to introduce to you is because it's really easy to remember, right? We're gonna use the senses. We're gonna notice four or five things related to each sense. What the research shows is that guided imagery physiologically can have some of the same benefits for our bodies and spirits and minds as if we were actually in that place, right? So. Our options may be limited right now for all kinds of reasons to be able to actually go to one of those places. Uh, but to know that we can take a virtual little mini vacation to some of these places at any time really opens up a whole world of possibilities. So pretty exciting. Um, so we're going to transition into the question answer time right now. And I was really grateful to get a couple of questions in ahead of time. Uh, and we'll start with those. First question came from April. And the question that April has is this, is there a time of day that's best for guided imagery morning or before bed? Great question, April. Thanks for asking. Um, the answer to that question is actually really personal. The nice thing about guided imagery is it's very agile. You can practice it for a short amount of time and do a mini guided imagery, or you, I, I personally can share with you that I've done guided imagery for up to an hour at a time. Um, and it's been very nourishing to me. So the time is agile, the time of day is agile. A lot of people like to do guided imagery at night before bed as a way to kind of calm down and ease into sleep. Um, I've worked with people who really like to do guided imagery in the morning if they wake up with a lot of maybe anxiety about the day. Um, it can be a nice practice to kind of not bring down, notch down some of those worries in the mind um, to get started in the day. I personally have also done guided imagery in the middle of the day. Um, do many guided imageries as needed. Um, this is, uh, uh, for me personally, one of my favorite forms of meditation, so I use it very liberally. Um, a lot of people who use this on a regular basis get into kind of a routine and find a time that they personally prefer. 
Next question is from Todd, and his question is this. Do you have any guided imagery recordings that you've created that we could access and you could recommend? Any guided imagery recordings on CD, any available for download or any apps? So Todd, thank you for um, bringing that question and uh, knowing it in advance helped me actually do a little research to be able to point you in a good direction. Um, one that I actually felt really at ease recommending is one I found through the Cleveland Clinic Wellness Program, and it's called uh, Mindful Moments. And I think Sue's going to provide the information um, for you on the Facebook Live. Uh, it's um, a great introduction to a bunch of different types of mindfulness and meditation practices. Um, and the reason I really like it is it allows you to try out a bunch of different things. And then if you find one or two types of mindfulness and meditation that you really like, um, you can go a little bit deeper into those with some other apps. I will say too that part of the conversation in the mindfulness meditation kind of app recording world has been um, around a desire to increase diversity of the voices that are presenting. Um, so if that's something that's of interest to you, there's a lot of new uh, options available too. But I would really um, point you in the direction of that Cleveland Clinic Wellness resource. They did a lot of research um, in putting together those resources and I, I would recommend that you start there. I don't actually have any um, recordings that I've done personally, uh, but we do in non-COVID times teach uh, meditation classes at Mary and Joy and um, I'm very active in that effort um, and uh, do, do some teaching around this um, as well. So uh, Sue, are there some additional questions that have come in? Oh, no more questions. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, got it. All right. Um, well, let me pause and invite you uh, listeners to um, engage with some questions. If there is something that has come to mind um, during the presentation or a question that you do have, I would love to answer. It looks like something maybe came up. No? Oh, that's you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. Are there any other questions? Do you have any questions? So you mentioned this is a form of meditation, yes. guided imagery, right? right. And right. I know a lot of people have challenges um, with meditation, just with the quieting of the mind. So sure. would you recommend this as like a gentle step towards a meditation practice? Is the guided imagery? Yeah, so the question um, is that kind of reflecting on the fact that this is one of many meditation practices, um, would this be a good place to start? Is that a good paraphrase? Yes. <laughs> um, I, I would say that if you were able to ease into the guided imagery kind of primer that we just did right now and um, could could find some space to relax while we were doing that, then yes, guided imagery might be a good start for you. If while we were doing it, you're kind of going, this is not my cup of tea, <laughs> then I would really point you toward that um, Cleveland Clinic Wellness uh, app because really, please, please, if, if guided imagery isn't your cup of tea, don't throw out meditation as a whole, because truly there are lots and lots of practices and people who use meditation all the time um, have their favorites, right? They, they find the one or two or three or four or five practices um, that are most nourishing to them personally. So it, it's, it's very, um, it, I, I think I used this word before, but I'll use it again. It's a very spacious practice. Um, and I, I think another misconception that people have sometimes regarding meditation is that um, it's tied to like one specific religion or something like that, which is not true at all. Meditation, it's why, one of the reasons why we use meditation at Mary and Joy is because people from any background, any culture, any ethnic uh, identification, any spiritual and religious preference 
um, can, can find um, a place in meditation that's comfortable for them if they want it, right? It's nothing that, you know, is forced on anyone, of course, but um, it, it's a very personal thing. And the biggest question I would encourage you to ask is, is this helping me, <laughs> right? Is this helping me? Um, and if it's not, try a different form and um, just kind of have some patience. Be curious, right? Be curious. What, what for me um, is the most effective way to help kind of do that calming the mind, calming the spirit? Meditation and mindfulness kind of at the core is about being in the present moment right now, right? When you think about it, a lot of our stress in life is when our minds start taking off toward the past or perseverating about the future. And meditation and mindfulness just gives our brains a little break. Sometimes when I'm teaching on meditation, I think of it like a computer reboot, right? If you, that spinny circle just keeps spinning, 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 and you can't turn it off, sometimes just a nice reboot kind of gets things back on track. And meditation and mindfulness can help to do that for the brain. Any other questions that came through? Oh, well, I hope, truly hope that you've enjoyed the class and maybe learned a few things. And um, I wish you, as we conclude, blessings for your gentle healing. Thank you.